All right. All right, hi everybody, this is Andrea Barber again. Sorry we had some connection interruptions from our previous video where we started the tea time. So we will go ahead and get started now and I will go back to Joy. I am going to pour um, water into my teacup and I'm enjoying peach tea today. Um, when we do have our teas here at Ruth Muir, I like to present a tea box. That, and um, like today I'm having peach. For the spring and summer I like to really kind of focus on the fruity um, teas and flowery teas. My favorite is what Andrea is having today. And then in the winter time, something very popular with our tea with Mrs. Claus, we like having uh, tea that might have cinnamon in it or um, peppermint is a favorite with the kids also. But we also always have our regular English teas like English Tea Time, Earl Grey, and I have recently found the Lady Grey that I really, really like. So um, I know that there's different flavors of greys. And so and speaking about uh, Earl Grey, that's another whole uh, talk about who he was. And I doubt that the Earl even knew that he had a tea named after him, but it's really kind of fun to make sure that we do have these teas on hand. What I like to consider as our house tea is the pomegranate tea. And the reason for that is um, the pomegranate is represented in Ruth Muir as a, a symbol of wealth and prosperity. And it's a beautiful way of uniting the whole mansion together. So that is our house tea. Um, we always have the pomegranate teas available at all of our teas. So I'm gonna go ahead and sit down. So I hope that everybody's doing well today. Um, it's too bad that I can't have you here at Ruth Muir in our Home, but we're going to come into your home and hopefully you also have poured yourself some tea and we're going to share this time together. Um, so it's just really a good time of the day just to stop and, and uh, reflect and try to gather our friends together because we do miss you and um, so it's wonderful that you are joining us today. So um, I don't know if a lot of you knew about the history of tea or would know that. But um, I'm just going to give you a little bit of information of um, what tea was all about and why we find it important here at Ruth Muir. But here we always think about the English teas. We think about England having teas. And in fact, three years ago today, um, I was in England having tea <laughs> at the, uh, the Bridge Tea Room. And so um, it's kind of wonderful that we are doing this today. But um, I want to say that France was enjoying tea time about 22 years before it was introduced to England. And so that's a little bit of an unknown fact. And so um, maybe sometime instead of having an English tea, we'll have a French tea. It would be <laughs> kind of fun. But in, it was about in 1840 that Anna, who happened to be the seventh Duchess of Bedford, she was a um, lady in waiting for Queen Victoria. Um, but she was starting to have some hunger pains in the afternoon. She called it a sinking feeling. And no wonder, because people during that time only ate about twice a day. You would get up and you would break your fast from sleeping, which is what we call breakfast, and then they would go all day without eating until later in, in the evening, around 8 o'clock, and they would have large meals, several courses. I, myself, don't like to eat that late, especially that heavy. So I can see why she was feeling a little peckish around <laughs> 4 o'clock in the afternoon. So to, the solution for the Duchess was to have a pot of tea delivered to her boudoir, her private uh, chambers, and she would have a few sandwiches or sweets or things like that. She continued to do this and found that it was fun to enjoy um, tea in the afternoon with some friends. And so she would gather her friends and they started just having uh, tea in the afternoon. And it kind of would take that uh, hunger away until they were able to eat later on. Now she would travel with Queen Victoria quite often. So it was time, one time when they were returning back to London that she even had um, uh, somebody send out little cards of, or invites to have friends come join her. So that is really kind of what started the afternoon tea as we know it, where friends gather. And um, we enjoy it so, so much. I still enjoy tea every afternoon. And um, it's just really kind of fun to think 
about that. And you know, before long, the fashionable society was sipping tea and nibbling on sandwiches in the afternoon. And traditionally, the upper class would serve a low tea in the afternoon. This is confusing to some Americans sometimes because you think low tea would be um, something that is lower in class, but actually what it means is position of the table. Mm, and we were okay. having tea here at Ruth Muir in the front, in the French drawing room. He would be probably served a low tea because the coffee table or the tea table would be lower. And so that's where the low tea comes from. We right now, even though we might be having a light fare, would be having um, a high tea because we were sitting high at the table. And so that's just something that we kind of get mixed up. It's not really the amount of food um, or the type of food served. It's, it's just uh, where you are in reference to um, eating and enjoying your tea. But really, it's kind of sad that us Americans and also in England, um, you can't break at 3.30 to have tea time. So that's why I think it's kind of fun that we're able <laughs> to have some tea time and invite you. Mm -hmm. that we are missing our friends so much in having uh, some tea time today. So Absolutely. I hope that you are all enjoying your tea with us and you poured yourself some tea and, <laughs> and um, having that along with us. So it's just kind of fun. All right. Now, I don't know if you know some a uh, little bit of background about certain things that take place at a tea and mm -hmm. um andrea maybe if you have some of those questions yeah i ask and we'll see if anybody might know that absolutely so um one of my first questions is of course does one drink tea or take tea i've heard of both ways <laughs> well what's the proper way of saying it is you drink tea drink tea i know that i have uh, said that let's take tea together, but uh, you drink tea. And in the Victorian times, uh, the lower class would say, uh, let's take tea, and uh, the upper class would think that was vulgar. So, <laughs> so you say whatever you want. <laughs> but it's proper to drink tea. Drink tea. Okay. Now, um, looking at our little teapot here, how is the shape, or why is the shape of a teapot different than, say, a coffee pot or a chocolate pot? Well, it's squattier, first of all, and it's full body. So mm -hmm. as the tea leaves are dispersed and they're able to flow in there, the spout is lower so it does not disturb the uh, tea leaves that are in the infusion going really? on in there. So what also is proper to do is as you're pouring tea to your guests or for yourself, you use a tea infuser mm -hmm. and many different styles and they're really kind of fun to collect. But this then would capture the loose tea leaves so that your guests wouldn't have them floating around in, in your cup. Oh, I never knew that was why, that they were, they were shaped the way they are. <laughs> so um, now I see you put it kind of facing away from you. Is that the correct placement of the teapot on the table? The correct way to a hostess is to have the spout facing me. Oh, okay. Which seems backwards to me because it... It feels awkward to have to reach around, but that way it's ready to go when I come to you and pour um, to you. Oh. So the, the proper way for the teapot is always to face, have the spout face the hostess. Very interesting. And um, so I've heard you mention before something called a tea urn. Is that for brewing or for infusing tea? A tea urn is very important if you're having tea because it keeps a large amount of water ready. Um, it is not to serve tea out of. And so if you do have an urn, say something like this, and, and which is more of a coffee server, but if you were able to have a nice big urn to hold hot water, you would take the teapot to the, uh, over to the urn. You do not bring an urn or a kettle over to the teapot. It's just not proper. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about tea cups. We have lots of lovely little tea cups on the table here. Um, so how does a tea cup differ from a coffee or a chocolate cup? Originally, tea was so expensive, mm -hmm. so when you serve tea, you would serve small amounts, and so the teacup started very petite and very small, uh, somewhat like a demitoss, but it was wider at the top, and that way your tea could kind of season a little bit before you would drink it, kind of cool it down a little bit, so that's why you see teacups pretty wide-mouthed, um, so that that can start to cool down a little bit. 
And then here we have a larger uh, style of a teacup, which also could be used for a coffee cup, but the same style. It was just that you could afford to serve a little bit more. Mm -hmm. But this is the petite teacup that started out um, originally. I know that a lot of people will have a beaker or a mug for their tea, but I enjoy having a teacup. It just makes tea <laughs> taste so, so much better. It definitely it feels much fancier. Too. It does. <laughs> um, so you've mentioned before a mustache cup. Now, oh. what is that? Oh, very good. <laughs> Gentlemen would appreciate those. Um, that had a teacup, a wide rim, but it had a little shelf in there. It allowed the tea to pass through, but it would keep the gentleman's mustache dry. <laughs> oh my I God. noticed with the mustache cups that I have seen, they were for right hand uh, drinking. And so I guess a, a gentleman would have to adapt if it was <laughs> not if he was a left-handed uh, so coffee drinker or tea drinker. You can't be left-handed and have a mustache. I guess not, if you're you heard it here first. <laughs> <laughs> well, they really they really think of everything. Um, okay, so here's a question: Why in older pictures of tea settings do you see spoons placed across the top of the teacup? Oh, okay, all right, our sweet little teaspoon here. Um, because the cups were so small, the saucer was also small. Mm -hmm. And so it was just kind of cumbersome. Where do I put it? Where do I put it? So you would just kind of lay it across there. And so that became uh, traditional, although it wasn't looked upon as uh, having good manners to do that. <laughs> but it did, t it took a different um, styling of letting your hostess know that you were finished and you didn't want any more tea to serve to you was with having the spoon upside down on your cup. Mm -hmm. That, I have had that happen to, at one of my teas and that let me know that gentleman was finished with tea. He didn't want any more. So it's kind of funny that it's a very uh, small, mm -hmm. uh, small known fact that that is really a simple of saying, thank you, but I'm, I'm finished. But that was why teaspoons would be laid upon the cup. Oh, okay. Um, so what's a tea plate? That's another term. You know, something that we have a few um, on oh we have one here <laughs> they have one right here what this does is makes your hands a little freer because you're not handling a saucer a teacup and a, and your sweet plate so what this would do is uh, give your a plate for your snacks or your tea sandwiches and then also there was a little well there to put your teacup on and these stayed in style for uh, throughout the years a buffet server or things like that but this was actually considered a tea plate where it had um, a place for your teacup it's so great that we actually have that in our gift shop know, so I you know, can get one so of your great. own once we open mm -hmm. um now we've all heard the expression not my cup of tea do you know where that expression comes from it really wasn't very good if that was said about you <laughs> <laughs> it comes from, uh, 15th century in a japanese teaism uh, no tea to him. It reminds me of Seinfeld. When the, tea, the soup Nazi wouldn't serve soup to him. No tea to him. Um, it was said about someone that they just really didn't like very well. Okay. Um, yes. Not my cup of tea is how it was then later termed. But uh, if that's said about you, that's not a good thing. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So I noticed today that you are not wearing gloves at this tea. Um, what are the proper protocols for wearing gloves at an afternoon tea? Okay, um, well, a hostess would not be serving tea with gloves on, and it really wouldn't even be proper for the hostess to have her apron on either. So um, a hostess would come uh, without her hat or without her gloves. But if you are a guest and you are going to have tea and you did wear your hat, you can leave your hat on through the whole time. So if all of you at home are wearing your pretty hats, that's fine. But uh, <laughs> of course, gentlemen would take those off in, in a building. But women would come um, to a tea or to dinner with gloves on and it was, you know, for the elements of um, if it was cold or whatever. But um, it was known for a woman to remove her gloves if she was shaking hands with someone and it became really hard to do. So you do see instead of skin to skin with shaking hands, a woman would just offer her hand. And, mm -hmm. um, but once she was uh, going to enjoy tea or dinner, those gloves needed to come off. You did not eat with your gloves on. Some of the longer formal evening gloves would have buttons at the wrist and that would allow the hand to come out. But you don't want your glove flapping around in your food. <laughs> so you would take those off. 
And um, this is something else that I want to touch on, is that the gloves were not put onto the table. Mm -hmm. They were laid across the lap. Even today, if you wore gloves, do not put anything on the table. Those are just a few things that I want to add also. You know, if you're going to a dinner or to a tea, you don't put your, your keys up on the table. You don't put your phone on the table. Oops. Um, you, you tuck those away. Oh, you're, you're okay. <laughs> That's no problem at all. But um, you do not have items on the dining room table. So that's mm. something else. You know, and something else that I think is really kind of funny, they said in London they can always uh, point out Americans in a tea room because their finger is overextended. Um, their only reason why the <laughs> pinky was up was because before teacups were equipped with a handle, it was for balance, and so you would have that little pinky up there. But if you're having tea somewhere, don't do it. It's just not necessary. So. <laughs> it's a little corny. <laughs> it's a little corny. That's true. I, I definitely would have stood out when I was in England because I'm pretty sure yeah. I did that. I, I think I did that at least once. <laughs> I know. I think that everybody has to try that. <laughs> yeah. Another thing, too, is you're not supposed to put your um, tea bag on your saucer, you are to put it on your little plate over there. Mm. And when you stir, stir your tea, if you put milk in it first, which if you do add milk to your tea, you season your cup first so that the uh, shock of the tea oh. won't break your cup. But anyway, you want to stir your tea, tea by just folding it, and you try really hard not to make a noise. So that is something mm. that um, is a proper way, is just trying very, very hard not to make a noise when you're stirring your tea. Now, <laughs> even though there are, there might be proper ways and, and uh, things that you should do for tea etiquette and all that, my main concern is that you have a good time. Mm -hmm. This is a time that you should uh, either reflect or enjoy in the afternoon. And uh, right now we have to do that by ourselves, but when you do gather with your friends, it's to have a good time. So I would not look upon anybody as ill faux pas with what you're doing. Just have a good time. And that's what mm -hmm. I think is really fun when we do have tea together. So. Yes. Our, sure. our teas at Ruth Mirror are much less formal, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, okay. So, yeah, I've definitely seen you put on a lot of teas at Ruth Mirror, and you do such a wonderful job, which is why I wanted you to um, give this talk today. And um, with that, I would like you to lead us into our butler's pantry. We are going to go have a look at some of our teapots in our collection. Well, before we do that, oh, sure. I would like to give a, a shout-out to our tea team um, that of course. always helped me with those fantastic mm -hmm. teas, uh, Karen and Marty and um, Ruth and Elaine and Kathy and Steve and Dina. We always have a really good time putting mm -hmm. on our teas. But one thing I want to say is, Andrea, you always help me also <laughs> in the front lines and also mm -hmm. uh, behind the scenes. So That's I why really this is important for me. It's fun. It really <laughs> yeah. is fun. So, yes, I love it. <laughs> yeah, so I just want to, it's kind of odd having tea without my tea team here. Yeah. So. Uh, we miss them, and we hope that all of this will pass soon. So if you want to see the fantastic teapot collection we have here at Ruth Mir, why don't we go on in to the butler's pantry, yes. and we'll view that. Then. Of course. Now, butler's pantry directly from our lovely dining room. Here is the Balik paper-thin porcelain, absolutely beautiful. Next to it is a Russian. Uh, teapot and gold leaf over here. Do you have a favorite, Andrea? I absolutely do. Um, it's actually the collection right here. Oh, the Wedgwood. The Wedgwood, yes. yes. Oh, very bold, the blue. Mm -hmm. bold. And that's going to be a focus of a collection that we're going to be showing uh, next year here at the museum. So it's really wonderful. But hopefully that you'll be able to come and see all of our different teapots uh, soon. And um, it is just a wonderful time to have a tour and show off what life was like back in the day of Elizabeth and A.R.'s time. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Joy. This yeah, was you. absolutely wonderful. Um, so if you would like to join us again next week, um, our next topic on Thursday is going to be the U.S. flag. Our executive director, Bill Furstenberger, is going to be talking a little bit about that next week. All right. Thank you guys so much for joining us, and I hope you all have a great day.